Are you a coach or a counselor who'd love to make a little bit more money but don't want to take on any more clients? Come on in and let's talk about how you can increase your income without increasing your hours. Welcome in or welcome back. My name is Kavlin and I help coaches and counselors create more income and more freedom and flexibility in their lives by leveraging what they have to get what they want. And today we're going to talk about something that lots of people are talking about right now, which is how to increase your income as a coach or a counselor. Now, you probably we're going to talk about some things that I have actually done myself. So um, as I'm looking at the list, I've done all these things. And so I'm going to give you the pros and cons of all of them. And I'm gonna give you a couple of tips that will help you choose the one that's gonna be right for you. Now, I'm gonna be ranking these David Letterman styles. So I'm gonna go from five down to one. And here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at number one, the ease of starting. How fast can you get started with this income stream? And what's the barrier to entry? Does it cost a lot of money? Is there a lot of effort um, or not, right? We're also looking at profitability. This is about money. So I don't want you doing something that's going to be a lot of effort and not a little money. So we're looking at profitability. We're also looking at sustainability, which means like, what's the likelihood that you'll be able to do this over the long haul? Is it something that's like for a short time? Will it grow? Will it develop? Is this a market that's saturated? We're going to look at that too. And then most importantly, we're going to look at your time. How much time is this asking for you? Because I want you to get back some of your time. So I don't want you to spend too much time making any money. So that's how I'm ranking these. So starting with number five is teaching. So this can be teaching at a university or even teaching for CEUs. If you've ever gotten a re, like a advertisement for something from like PESI or one of those types of organizations, they contract with providers to teach those classes. So PESI is just the organization that contracts with these different providers. And so you can make a reasonable salary doing that. Um, you can also teach at the university level. So you can, I, and I taught um, graduate classes for the program that I went through for my master's degree. So you can teach in any of those ways. I'm putting that at number five for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think that um, it's not something that you can just like automatically do. You have to be selected. You have to be hired. You might have to do a resume, a curriculum video, like all these different things. Um, it's a process. So it's not like, oh, I decided to teach at a university today and I'm about to go make money tomorrow. That's not how it works. So there is a lot of kind of runway in terms of getting started with that. The other thing is the money is not that great, guys. In general, you're going to make you know, more than what you would typically make as maybe like a one-on-one -on -one counselor. Like if you're working in a school or something like that, you might make a little bit more money. But generally, you're going to make a few thousand dollars as an adjunct professor. You're going to make a few thousand dollars a semester. And that might be requiring you to work a couple nights per week or um, at least one Saturday a, a week. And you're going to do that over an entire semester. You're going to be grading papers. And that, I mean, like to me, that's just way too much work for that amount of money. Now, if you're working with PESI or some of those type of organizations where you're doing workshops specifically under someone else's heading, you might not have to work quite as many hours, but a lot of times they have you do like a full day workshop or a two day workshop. And so again, there's a lot of time commitment. Um, so as far as sustainability, I don't know. I don't know how popular those are right now. I know that there's people still doing them, but I'm gonna say that that is my number five. It's something that you can do. Absolutely, if you really love teaching, go for it, right? If it's something that you're really passionate about, go for it. But for me, that's gonna be a no. I did that early in my career, but I haven't done it in a long time. Number four is tangible products. So this might be t-shirts, mugs, um, printed books. I've done these as well. So you see in the background, I've got that picture of that. That is one of the tangible books that I created. When I did the books, I actually printed them in bulk and sold them one by one or sold them to organizations. So I actually did really like working with the books. That's my number four because there really isn't a very high barrier to entry in that. If you're willing to invest a little bit of money, you can do that. Um, now they've got things like KDP print on demand where you can upload a book and KDP will print it for you. You're not getting quite as much money, but it's still your customers get to have a tangible product and people really like that. Um, with things like mugs and t-shirts and playing cards and all those kind of things, there is definitely a market for that. I think the marketing piece of that is a little bit more challenging unless you've got a built-in audience who's ready to snap them up. So 
fairly profitable. Usually you can get at least 50% um, profit margin. You may have to invest a little bit of money. So there is a cost usually associated with that in general. Again, unless you're doing that Amazon KDP. Um, it's fairly sustainable, but I don't particularly want to have bo books, boxes of books around my house. So that one was a no for me. I do like and, and have things available for Amazon um, KDP or print on demand. And I think that's a sustainable way to do that if you want to go the product route. Now, three is counseling or coaching groups or group workshops. And I'm separating these out from teaching because these are the kind that you're going to deliver yourself. You're going to advertise for these, you're going to promote these, and you're going to deliver these on your own. So you don't have to wait to be hired or selected by someone else. And I think that's a great way to start. You really can start a group with as little as maybe three, four, five people. So there's a very low um, level of you know, barrier to entry on that. You really can't start to get people interested in that. Maybe you have five or six clients right now that you think would be a good fit for a group. You can say, hey, I'm hosting a group and you can throw up a landing page and get started. So very low barrier to entry there. There's also not a ton of cost involved. In general, you're gonna use some type of a product to go with it. So maybe a workbook, an ebook, or maybe even a print book. Um, but you can all wrap that into the cost of the product that you're offering. If you're doing workshops, we have found in some of the practices that I work with that offering periodic group workshops, whether it be like a lunch and learn or, a, you know, um, kind of morning retreat or evening retreat or a, a Saturday session, those can be a really good kind of one off to get your existing clients to spend a little bit more money with you. Um, you can also use those as kind of an entry point for new clients. So maybe they're not quite ready to sign on with you in the one on one um, or maybe for a long term contract, but you can get them in for that one six week group session or something like that. Two is where we're getting into my zone. So these next two are the ones that I recommend for pretty much everyone okay so number two is consulting and you may not have ever thought of this because you're like who wants a mental health consultant or who wants a coaching consultant but guys consulting is a highly profitable stream to add to your current offerings and you'd be amazed at some of the people who actually want consulting to be a part of what they receive from you. When I say consulting, I, when I'm going to tell you some of the things I've done. I've written curriculums. I've um, created a podcast. I've taught workshops. I've coached a group of staff members. And you can do this as yourself or you can do this with other coaches or counselors who you partner with who essentially become like 1099 employees of yours, right? Now, here's the great thing about consulting. It is a very profitable income stream. In general, it's at least four figures, but I've also seen it go as high as five or six figures. We just signed a six-figure contract within the last 60 days that's actually renewable for up to three years. So it can be incredibly lucrative. And if you structure your consulting right, you can actually make it so that it's not hard to deliver and not challenging for you in terms of um, you know, how you sustain it. So the profit is, is easy. Now, here's where consulting probably loses a few points. There can be a really long runway to getting started. I have had consulting contracts with people who were in my existing network closed within 30, 60 days. I have had consulting contracts take a full year to close. And I have had contracts that I worked on for a year that never closed, right? So there is a runway with this. My favorite thing to do is to use those groups and those workshops to make yourself look more appealing to the potential customers who might hire you for consulting. But please be clear, I've got consulting contracts with nonprofits, with youth serving organizations, with hospitals, um, you name it, people want what you have to offer. So offering consulting is a great, great, great way to do it. If you have any interest in public speaking as well, that's a really uh, great way to kind of loop in people who might want consulting. And it's a great income stream that you can do. It's very, very sustainable. Um, most nonprofits have a consulting budget or consultant budget line item in their budgets every single month. I used to review, years ago, I used to review grants um, 
And one time I worked with an organization that gave out grants to different nonprofits. And so right in their budget, it says they're hiring a consultant. And for a lot of these nonprofits, they are hiring, you know, like anywhere from five to 10% of their annual budget actually goes towards consultants. So if you have an organization around who you know is interested in mental health or who um, supports mental health in some way, or who cares about people or um, who's helping people who might have mental health needs, hiring a consultant to, to help them structure and outline their programs or even just you know review their programs can be incredibly, incredibly lucrative as a stream for your practice. And then last, but certainly not least, is digital products. Now, here's why I'm saying digital products is number one. First and foremost, there is no barrier to entry. If you've got access to a phone or a laptop, um, you can cr create a free Canva account and you can literally create a digital product today. You can use Stand Store to create a free website. Um, you can get a free trial of the Stand Store to create a free website where you can host that digital product and you can have it up and running within a couple of hours, right? Um, so there is no barrier to entry at all. It can be highly profitable because it's very low amount of input. There's very little overhead. Again, if you're using, say, for example, Stand Store, you're going to probably pay, you know, 20, 30 bucks a month once you're up and running, you know, outside of that trial. But if you have a website already, chances are your website has the capability for you to be able to sell stuff without you even having to go on Stand Store. So no, you know, very, very low overhead. Now, it's also very sustainable. And if you do it the way I'm suggesting, well, so here's where one of those tips comes in. If you're doing it the way I suggest it, you don't have to spend a ton of time on this. So how do I suggest you do this? I want you to start with a template. Now hear me out. I know we spent all these years in high school and college talking about plagiarism and all these different things. But here is why a template will probably be the solution you're looking for. It's going to give you a structure and a framework to what you're doing. And it's going to eliminate the need for you to be a graphic designer. It's going to eliminate you needing to um, do extra work in terms of, you know, formatting and all of those things. And it gives you a framework of the content as well. Here's what I suggest you do. Go in, tweak the pictures on the template, tweak the language a little bit on the template, sprinkle, sprinkle your secret sauce on the template, and you'll be able to make it look and feel like you created it from scratch. Then when you couple that with your personality and who you already are, you can still sell it to your existing clients and start to gain additional clients as well. Now, this is great to bring in some income for you or to bring in some new clients for you. But if you want to use this as just an income stream that does not require you to give up any additional time, you want to set this up on autopilot. You want to set up a funnel that gives a little taste of your product to the person who's going to buy it and encourages them via email to purchase it over time. Now, if you want to learn more about how to do that, I want to encourage you to check in the link below. I'm going to talk to you about the roadmap. Um, and that is a digital marketing course, which shows you how to set up your systems to attract your perfect customer and get them to purchase without you having to have one-on-one -on -one conversations or spend too much time. If you purchase one of my templates, I will walk you through how to customize it. If you want to get access to a template, I have a five pack, which will give you five digital workbooks slash eBooks that you can use to create your first digital products. And I also host workshops every single month that show you how to customize these to match your brand and your style. Once you've purchased the templates, you get to come to the workshop for free. So there's very little cost very little time. I can actually show you how to edit these and customize them in under two hours. But during the workshop, I walk you through the entire process so you can kind of set it up, um, get your store up and running. So if you can give me a Saturday morning, I can help you get your first digital product up and running. And again, very little time, very little money, and it'll be up and running, ready to launch within just a few hours. So do you have some additional ideas that you've used to make money as a side hustle, as a coach or a counselor? Is there one of these ideas that jumped right out at you? Make sure you drop a comment below because I want to hear how you are making everyday payday.